1991. Hmm. Maybe guest speaker Obi-Wan Kenobi can assist me with this year. That's why I'm here. Obi, was 1991 a good year for rock music? Yes. And was it a good year for being a muscly Austrian cybernetic organism doing the coolest shotgun reloads in history? Yes, yes. Okay, but was it a good year for horror cinema? No! Indeed, it was a poor year for horror. There are a handful of exceptions, naturally, such as The Silence of the Lambs and Cape Fear, but I can already hear the butt chumps inhaling a deep breath to rant about how these are thrillers, not horrors. Whatever. The only conversation more boring than that is whether Insert Film Here is a Christmas movie, or the backlash from smug reporters coercing an aging director into giving their thoughts on comic book media. Anyway, given this year's meager output, Mickey Rooney stars in Silent Night, Deadly Night 5, The Toymaker. I thought I would use this opportunity to focus on something a little different. Nineteen ninety one also saw the release of the underground no budget splatter flick Bad Karma, directed by Alex Chandler. Whilst it is marred by the usual no budget errors, amateurish acting, poor lighting, occasional audio warping, this British short film encapsulates the unstoppable spirit of no holds barred, no fucks given, punk filmmaking. Bad karma begins at a back garden barbecue. At first, it is all going swimmingly. Right, who wants what? Lager? 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 Yeah, Dame. Yeah, Lager, please. Unfortunately, the party is gatecrashed by a couple of Harry Klishners seeking to spread the good word. Even more unfortunately, the trespassers shapeshift into some campy monsters and butcher the guests in a variety of bloody spectacles. Dave, the host of the party, escapes with his girlfriend. Instead of alerting the authorities, they completely understandably take shelter at his best friend's house. Which just happens to be a BDSM brothel. Because of course it is. Because the film needs an extended sequence of leather-clad gimps and whores battling shape-shifting Buddhists who won't stop chanting Kali Ma. It's like a Temple of Doom-based stag do gone horribly, horribly wrong. Things are looking shaky until the Hare Krishna's mortal enemies, a gang of hyper stereotypical rednecks, rush in to quote unquote save the day. From that summary, you don't need me to tell you that bad karma is as tasteless as a Jacob's cracker that's been left out on the patio for 150 years. What are you doing? Got to say I'm fucking this bitch. Oh my god! That is all part of this anarchistic, shocking 90s vibe. The end credits list a bunch of directors, companies, and effects artists who inspired this mad piece of film, but the list is not necessary. The inspirations are as plain as day, bleeding out of the pixelated screen. The whole short is an exercise in madness and over-the-top gore, but is incredibly reminiscent of early Sam Raimi. Especially when the gimp, Mr. Whippy, Tools up for the big fight, in a direct reference to Ash. Ooh, One of the villains suddenly wears a hockey mask, just in time for the film to adopt a classic Tom Savini machete trick. The heightened stereotypes and offensive humour is absolutely in line with the films of Troma. The credits also feature a punk middle finger to standard formalities. A small precursor to the iconic text that opened each episode of South Park, after Parker and Stone got a big career boot, from working with Troma. 
It is fitting that Alex Chandon and his team pay special thanks to magazines such as Fangoria, as it was via the Dark Side magazine's competitions that Bad Karma received major attention and word of mouth. It won't be to everyone's liking, obviously, and the very amateur style will be immediately off-putting to many, even before the violence and crass jokes really take hold. Will somebody get the door? But I find a lot of joy here. It reminds me of all the terribly shitty attempts at films we used to make in the back garden, blessed with many of the same wonderful flaws. Don't know anyone who could act? Doesn't matter, invite your friends over. Don't have an older person to play the older dad character? Eh, just shove an awful wig and glasses on this dude. Dave! Sarah, what's all that screaming about? The main rednecks performance makes Yosemite Sam seem like a reserved, soft-spoken individual. It's the old smoke trick, just like the Indians used to use in Owa! Shut the fuck up, Junior! Oh, and the lead bad guy is a delight. He sounds like the singer from Madness. Two more days! Nothing can stop us now! Hey you! Don't watch that! Watch this! If you watch the behind the scenes, this connection with such material only deepens. If you've tried to make a movie with very limited resources, this footage is all too relatable. You wince as the effect goes off before the take was ready. Shit! So... Anytime? Action. Oh, cunt. You get frustrated as the shot continues to fail. Action. But then you share that great rush of relief and elation when it finally goes to plan. That was worth the wait. That was worth the wait. The effects are noteworthy. It is unsurprising to learn that those behind the bloody messes graduated onto bigger things. Take Duncan Jarman, for example. Definitely not to be confused with Derek Jarman. He progressed onto Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, and Resident Evil. The writer-director Alex Chandon never quite broke out, but still formulated a decent enough career, piling up with the band Cladle of Filth to produce their videos and documentaries, before eventually creating the feature film Cradle of Fear. If you've got a spare 36 minutes, and briefly forget that 4K exists, give Bad Karma a chance to win you over with its balmy, rebellious spirit. Hey, Kalima! Hey!